Will our stomachs do the time for these food crimes? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Over the past few months of being holed up at home, a lot more people have started cooking for themselves. I wish I could say I was one of them, but hmm. uh, I'm holding out. Right. But as a result, a lot of people have created a lot of things which the internet dubs food crimes. Rhett, have you eaten any foods that you consider to be food crimes? No, there's not many things that I don't like, but I've always thought that the lettuce wrapped burger was offensive. I, I get that, and just to be clear, food crimes are real dishes that are shared online and universally critiqued as crimes against the culinary arts. Okay. They are unique and they're hideous food creations that make no sense and should be sent back to the circle of hell from which they came. Let's explore some. It's time for crazy food crimes, but not like what's in Dahmer's freezer. Why do people make meals worse than scams targeting geezers? We recently posted a series of actual food crimes as matchups on our Instagram, and you voted on which dishes you thought were the biggest of the two food crimes. Okay, Mythical Chef Josh has recreated these lovingly recreated these food crimes. We're gonna bring out the matchup, we're gonna try both of them, and we're trying to predict the one that you said would be the worst, is the greater offender. Mm -hmm. And behind that, we're going to put our Yak Scaro, Captain Yak Scaro flag. All right, the first matchup, we got bologna mayo cake, mmm, versus spaghetti jello. Now this one's very eye-catching, and that one's very deceiving, so, I think we need to uh, uh, let, cut into. Need to let me cut it. Uh, you know what? You, that, did, you brought it in facing yourself. So, I mean, don't hurt yourself, don't hurt me. Okay. Let's see what's inside of this thing, huh? Bologna mayo cake. Oh, it cuts nice. The white stuff is mayo? That is correct, yes. Let's see it. Oh, <laughs> that, that is purdy, y'all. That looks good. I mean, do you think that's more purdy than this is? This is very. Thank you, Morgan. Now, this is actually. I didn't know this, I'm from the South, I didn't know that bologna cake is an actual Southern recipe and they actually uh, used it or referenced it in Sweet Home Alabama, the movie, but they use cream cheese with that oh, and gosh. this is mayo. And I'm stuck. You've created a problem. Uh, can you can you help just, extricate? Just slice yeah, 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 there you go. Thank you, that was good. Yeah. Okay. I'll get some of that mayo on top. Dink it and sink it. No, There's nothing wrong with this. It's just a bunch of bologna with mayo on it, yep. there's just no bread. Not bad. Let's try this out. So this is jello made out of spaghettios. That's tomato soup and gelatin. Um, and then you got the vine or sausages uh, as garnish in the middle. I'm not, I'm not gonna eat the, the Vienna sausage or the Vienna sausage as we said at my house. We were just a little more upscale. We okay. live closer to the country club. Not in the country club, just close. We could see it. Um, That's mm. not bad. It like tastes like spaghettios. Frozen, I mean, not frozen. Just cold. Cold. Wow, I mean, I mean the I, good news is they're not crimes to our palates. I, I don't think that I would bring either one of these things to a family reunion. But which one do you like better? I like this one a little better. I like the taste of this one better, but I actually think, are we, are we, are we guessing on a three, two, one, or are we just, well, how are we doing this, Stevie? We're, we're gonna three, two, one flag, I think. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right, I think I know which one. And you, you guys you know what's on the for. line, right? Like, th there is a lot on the line in the end for you. That's right, because whoever gets less points at the end, and we've got escalating points each round, will have to consume a food crime that Mythical Chef Josh has created just for us. Okay, so you're guessing which the MBs thought was the bigger food crime in three, two, one. Whoop, up, oh, yep. I, I think the just spaghetti. By looks. Bolo bologna is something that turns more people off. That's my theory. Mm hmm. 53%. Close. Of the mythical beasts, think the bologna mayo cake is the bigger food crime. You're right, and well, you're we're tied. Wrong. Okay, this next food crime matchup is what happens when the devil goes shopping at 7-Eleven. <laughs> Pringles jam versus Doritos cereal. Let's start over here with the Doritos cereal, Rhett. Um, Why don't we? Originally posted on Reddit in 2015 by user Decepticum. Decept uh, it was basically originated over on the Major League Gaming community, which is like eSports sponsored by Doritos and Mountain Dew. So uh. MLG Food is anything that uses Mountain Dew and Doritos. 
including learn something new every day. This Doritos cereal. So it's just Doritos, kind of crunched up a little bit, like crushed, and then Mountain Dew on top. I mean, how could you what, nailed it, Red? What's not to like? You nailed it. That's the recipe. I just gave you the recipe for those of following along at home. I want to really get it soaking. I mean, the first bite's the crispiest. Um, Nothing in my life has ever met my expectations exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it is exactly what you think Mountain Dew poured over Doritos would taste like. And the first bite is gonna be the best because that stuff's gonna get soggy and nasty. Like they don't come together to make anything different. It's just, oh, there's Doritos, there's Mountain Dew. They're both there. Welcome to the party in my mouth. Um, I have no clue what Pringles Jam is though. Um, okay, so Pringles Jam was uh, introduced to Reddit by Sola Angelus, and they were actually inspired by the Pringles tagline, which I didn't know this is what the Pringles tagline was. You don't just eat them, you jam them. So they were like, okay, I'm gonna take that literally. And then they asked How their grandma, you? and the grandma said it was a good idea, so they did it. Well, are we are we supposed to dip more Pringles in it? Or well, there's only one Pringle. You wanna split the Pringle? I mean, it is a dip, right? I'll give you the small one. Okay, so it's not t typically. Oh, and it broke. And what's in it? Josh, you know what's in this? Oh yeah, it's just fruit, pectin, and sugar. Or sorry, fruit. The Pringles is the fruit. Pringles, <laughs> pectin, and sugar, and a little bit of water. What? That's uh -huh. awful. I mean, this is like something you use in a construction project. If you get really desperate, you can eat the caulk. <laughs> <laughs> what? Eat the what? The caulk. The caulk. The caulk. You gotta caulk. really hit that L. Caulk it. Yeah, yeah. If you get really desperate, you might have to eat the caulk. I don't caulk. know. I think this is good for babies. A baby would eat it. It is fruity. I don't think a baby would complain specifically about it. But that's not what we're trying to figure out. Which one would the, do they Based determine on the- Based on looks alone, which one is the biggest offension? This is a bigger offension. Ready to guess? But what did you think? Mm, this is tough. Three, two, one. I think oh, the, I'll take a risk. I think it's the jam. We're back at 53%. Oh gosh, really? Oh, see, it's close. 53% of the MBs think Pringles yes. jam is the bigger food prime. You're right, it is. That just tastes like what you think it is, because it but is it, what it is. But it's, but it's good. <laughs> you wanna know something scary and entertaining? We've got a novel that's scary and entertaining, and it's in paperback. Go to bleakcreek.com. <clears throat> I thought that was Stevie's voice <laughs> when you that made was my that Stevie impression. Oh. Bleakcreek.com. Get that book. It's floppy. Okay. <sighs> now we've got a peanut butter sandwich with cheese and onion mm -hmm. versus something called cheesy marmite toast. Let's start with this cheesy marmite toast. Now, this is an actual thing in uh, Great Britain. Yes. You know, but these are like the crappy American versions of the same ingredients that make it just kind of thrown together. It's got mustard with some cheese, with some Marmite on toast. And usually it'd be like good bread and like a fine cheese and yeah. English mustard, it would be yeah. melted. We're, we're getting none of that. You're gonna just pick it up, huh? We just US of aid it. I know that Marmite's gonna be salty. Mustard does help. Um, cheese could have been melted, but. I wouldn't know what to compare it to. Mm. I would think that might be kind of fancy. That's not, that's not something I'm gonna be dreaming to go back to. Well, though. what about a peanut butter sandwich with cheese and onion? Okay, this thing was posted on a blog in 2012 called Burnt My Fingers, and the chef was introduced to the dish by their roommate, Elliot. <laughs> Thank you, Elliot. Elliot. So we got the peanut butter, the cheese, the, my onions are coming off. The onions is the, is the weirdest part to this, because I've, I've done peanut butter with mayonnaise, Banana, that kind of thing. I'm still hopeful about this. Peanut butter is such a strong flavor. Mm. Onion has a nice crisp crunch to it. You know what it does? The onion and the peanut butter together make it like a Thai peanut sauce. You're right. It tastes like a lettuce wrap sauce. This is good. Well, you know what? Burn my fingers and call me happy. Okay. This is pretty good. But I hope you guys didn't vote for this because that, I that's don't even, really good. that's not even a food crime. That's a food freaking discovery. All right, Elliot. Count down. Three, two, one. Mm, yeah, they definitely said this one was worse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Marmite, Marmite tops it all. Mm -hmm. I don't know, peanut butter and onions, man. You will not believe this. 
53% no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. of the MBs think the peanut butter cheese and onion yeah. sandwich is the bigger food crime. So close Hold every on. time though. 53% did like, I don't know, like five people take this and they voted the same way every time. There's no, I mean, Rhett, there had to Rhett, be more than that. Millions of people follow us on Instagram and are chomping at the bit to fill out any survey we post. Okay. <laughs> Okay, these final two food crimes are most heinous because they spit in the face of the land known for its food, Italy. We've got bubblegum banana pizza versus canned tuna with veganese, hot sauce, olive oil, and Italian herb seasoning. Yum. Just to, just to give a little more background over here, Reddit user Wadzilla made the post of this dish that her boyfriend makes for breakfast <laughs> every morning, which someone responded, you're dating a cat? <laughs> so, oh, you wanna dig in? No, I don't, I, I, I don't. This looks fabulous, doesn't it? I just don't understand how it happened. I don't, I, well, what, you what just, series of events you, led to this? I guess you're having canned tuna for breakfast and you're just throwing some stuff on it just to make it more interesting, like adding, adding the mayo or the veganese, I guess is normal. Okay. It actually isn't bad. No, it's not. The way it comes together is just like something you put on a sandwich, but there's no bread. It's very heavy for breakfast, though. The breakfast part is is confusing. I'll tell you what's confusing over here. Putting bubble gum on something as if you expected to just eat it. That's not what that's not what you do with bubble gum. So this is just simply a pizza with bananas and bubble gum on it. And the bubble gum, as you can see, in the oven just melted. And so I don't even think it's chewable anymore. So, but, but where did this oh, come the, from? The origin is a mystery. Facebook in 2018? 2018, there was a Facebook post. It, they don't know where it came from. There was a box that had something in Portuguese written on it that said the best pizza in the neighborhood. So, I don't know what neighborhood this is from. Oh, it smells awful. Oh, there's nothing like tomato sauce and bananas and gum to really create a war in your mouth. The most off-putting thing about it uh, is the taste of bubble gum in yeah. your mouth and you're just eating it. I want to chew the whole thing forever, but it's going away. It's sliding down the hatch. Hmm. Okay, Link. Um, so you're something so, wrong is happening that we can't fight. You're so far behind that you cannot win. Uh, but here's what I'm going to do because I'm a magnanimous friend. If you guess it correctly and you also guess the percentage, which is probably 53 percent, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. um, then you can win the whole game, and then I have to take the food punishment, the food crime. Hmm. So which one of these did the mythical beast think would be good? Let me see the picture. Zach, scroll back a little bit, because I need to look at what exactly they were looking at. Their versions look even scarier than ours. Thank you, Josh. Oh my gosh, okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Yeah. It, especially when you look at the picture that you guys voted on, that tuna looks nasty. And yeah. you're thinking. This seems fun. That you it's fun. You think this is fun, it's not but fun, it's this, bad. This is good, that's horrible. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say uh, 54%. Out of the 85,000 people who did take this poll on Instagram, 57% right. of the mythical beast think Bubble gum really? banana yeah. oh, pizza thought, is the bigger food. Oh, really, really? Well, you're right. You're yeah, I totally was wrong. Right. We thought you would think this is fun. I was so close to still being totally wrong. Yeah. All right. What's my punishment, Josh? Well, I was really inspired by tuna breakfast, so I made hot dog breakfast. Yeah. I'd actually eat this, but this is hot dogs, <laughs> ketchup, and mayonnaise on a short stack of buttermilk pancakes. Oh. Hmm. Think of it like chicken and waffles. Yeah, think of it just like that. Is that butter or may what is that around the. That's, that's mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. <laughs> it's just. More mayonnaise. How is that? Unnatural. <laughs> Don't throw away the leftovers. All right, thanks for participating, all 85,000 of you, especially that 53%. Uh, also, thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. You know what time it is. Hi, my name is Izazi, and I'm currently in the canola fields of Jeju, and it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. Canola. Fields. It comes from a field. Who field. knew? <laughs> Click the top link to watch us settle the great spoon or fork debate in Good Mythical Morning. And to find out where the Will of Mythicality is gonna land, get the Lost Causes of Bleak Creek paperback edition by visiting bleakcreek.com.